Let's talk about perhaps the most exciting thing to come out of all of these AI updates. There have been loads of recent AI updates, right? There's Gemini, uh, which is a currently completely free to use API. I would probably recommend switching over to something like DeepSeek if it's good enough in the future, if this becomes a very, very expensive API, or just stick with uh, Claude Sonnet 3.7, right? Which is probably as good, if not better, than Gemini 2.5. But for now, Gemini is a completely free to use API. We've got Client, which is a Visual Studio Code extension. You literally just need to download Visual Studio Code uh, on whatever platform you're on, Windows, Linux, whatever. And then on the left, go to Extensions, search for Client, download Client, put your API key and you're set up to go, right? And then we've got MCP servers. MCP Model Context Protocol is basically a way for your autonomous AI agents to speak directly to certain third-party APIs or all third-party APIs. Not just speak with them, but actually interact with them, right? So basically what we can do is we can create a, a basically free, right? Because sometimes you need to pay for a paid API, but like the, the building blocks of this are completely free. Autonomous agent that can code, create reports, create PDFs, create HTML, infographics, all of this crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, right? So it's the power of Claude Sonnet 3.7 mixed with the kind of autonomous agent ability of Klein and a free Gemini API to, you know, change the way that you do certain things online. Now I'll tell you one amazing use of this is reporting. 100% you can get this to uh, report for you, right? Um, but we're going to be talking about a slightly different use case in this video. So this MCP stack is very, very cheap. It's extremely cheap. You probably won't notice the costs of it, right? You can do unlimited amounts of research, right? You can find literally anything online, emails, businesses, backlinks, suppliers, buyers, and it's basically just using Klein and Gemini 2.5 and MCPs. So let's get into it. Now, if there were some words that you didn't understand or you don't know how to use Klein or you don't know how to use third-party APIs or MCPs or you don't even know how to download Visual Studio Code, you don't even know what Visual Studio Code is, do consider joining my school, guys. I'm trying to turn this into a one-stop shop to have everything you need to do everything that I show you in these videos. It'll be the first thing in the description and the pinned comment. Okay, so this is Visual Studio Code. You can see here on my MCP servers, I have Fetch, Perplexity, Fetch is also a free MCP to use, which is really, really cool. Um, so I do recommend getting Fetch and Perplexity Research, right? The way that you install them, by the way, is you just go to Marketplace, search for Fetch, and then just press Install and then run through the flow. I have a very specific workflow on this on the school. If you're struggling with installing MCPs, definitely check it out. So you can see at the bottom here, I have Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental selected. If I just go on this example here, this was just me testing to see whether um, Gemini could work with MCPs because for some reason in my head, I had it that only Claude could use MCPs, but it turns out any model can use MCPs within Klein. Um, so this is definitely very, very interesting, right? And you can do this for free even when Gemini becomes paid or basically for free using DeepSeek as well. Okay, so we're just gonna be using this prompt here. So use the perplexity, I'll put this in the description of this video. Use the perplexity MCP to find potential guest post opportunities. These are found by looking for a right for us or specific mentions of guest posting on a page on someone's website. The niche for this is classic menswear, so search around this niche. So things like right for us or guest posting specifically being mentioned. Once you find pages, make a CSV of 10 URLs that contain the specific information and then use the fetch MCP to search each of these pages and add information to the CSV, adding columns when new types of information is found on these pages. Make sure to put the specific URL that mentions guest posting or write for us inside the CSV and not just a homepage. And then I just added this now, finally create an HTML CSS JavaScript report of your findings. You can use SVG images to add some spice to the project. Now, one problem here is going to be rate limits just because this is quite a fast process. Um, the amount of calls it makes and things. If each of these MCP calls is a um, Gemini call, it's probably going to be too fast, right? So this is going to be heavily rate limited. So you will, for now at least, if you're doing this kind of process, have to sit with it for now. Now, I think Klein needs to update this as soon as possible, 
where it gets around the rate limits automatically or something, right? Okay, so we can see this process in action now. So it found a URL here, and then now it's found this page right for us, right? Um, and then if I press approve here, I should have this on auto approve, but what it does is it turns that entire page into LLM readable text, which should allow Gemini to then extract more information about guest posting and then add it to the CSV right here, right? So if, uh, it's just kind of bugging out because of all of the JavaScript on that page. But if I just press cancel here, right, we can see now we have this CSV. And remember, you can put the CSV anywhere. So let's just go on sheets.new. Because the CSV is effectively, um, yeah, it, it's usable in basically any um, kind of tool, like Excel, Sheets, Zapier, make an na10 all of that good stuff right so if we just right click here and reveal um where it is right so it's this one so if i go file import upload browse oh sorry let's drag so drag this here and then import data you'll see why this is so fucking useful right because now we've got this right so we'll just look at this one because this is the only one that has any real data in it we'll just format this wrapping wrap so we can see here it now has men's fashion trends so is that true apparently not no mention of fashion whatsoever on this page beautiful no mention of sustainability beautiful uh let's see so yeah it does say proper usage of subheadings h2 h3 that's right here royalty free images are allowed royalty free images are allowed you can use royalty free images so there's some problems here i think claude is still a little bit better you can see prohibited content gambling that's uh, right up here i did see that gambling events property related listings so it does a pretty amazing job of finding information scraping information and then putting that information into some kind of format that allows you to then use this information in whatever way you want now you can see there are some problems like for example this is not true um so you probably have to prompt because it looks like oh okay this is just it's just added it um to all of them as placeholder content so what you should say is make sure to never have placeholder content if you can't find one of the columns don't fill it in Right, this is called iteration prompting. I talk a lot about iteration prompting. It's super, super important. You have to know when to just say, okay, maybe the prompt is the problem. Maybe I need to change it, right? So if we just uh, go plus again, what I like to do is I like to say, for example, if you can't fill a column of the CSV in, do not add any placeholder data. Um, ensure to only add things you find to the final CSV uh, find on the page to the final CSV, right? So yeah, I mean, this is super exciting times. The fact that you can now do this and find guest post opportunities, find buyers, find, you know, all these different things completely or almost completely for free. Like the costs of perplexity are very, very low. The Plex, perplexity API. And to be honest with you, perplexity API is not necessarily needed. You might be better off using the Brave um, API or the Brave MCP. I'll have a video about that very, very soon just because the thing about the Brave MCP is that you're just getting search results. So what you can do is you can formulate site searches. So you can literally just do um, in text, write for us, and then like classic menswear after as the niche. And you can just scroll through these, look for ones that, yeah, you know, it can do this for you, right? You no longer have to do these kind of tedious processes. I'm going to leave the video there, guys. This is super exciting times. This is basically for free now. You don't have to pay like $10, $20 to get leads. You can literally get leads basically for free. With the Brave API, you get um, quite a lot, I believe, of... Um, searches get 2,000 free queries 
So, I mean, yeah, it might actually just be worth using the Brave Search API. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend. And I will see you very, very soon. That's insane. What? You get 2,000 queries per month. One query a second. This is actually good enough. This is enough to do this completely for free. Damn. <laughs> I should remake this video. I'm probably going to make this video again, but talking about Brave because this is crazy. Thanks for watching and peace out.